So my learners are up to week 12 of their studies and we've done a very, very basic A3 radial. So we've got a 20 amp fuse in the consumer's unit and we've wired in 2.5 millimeter squared twin and CPC cable, three socket outlets that are wired in the form of an A3 radial. I don't particularly like the joint box, unfortunately it's an assessment and the joint box is in the assessment. We now got to go on and do our test and as always our first test is continuity of CPC and polarity. But this time, we're going to have to prove the polarity of the three pin positions. So we're going to have to prove the CPC gets to the top earth pin, the line and the neutral pin are all in the correct position or correct rotation. Also, we're going to have to prove that the switch will turn the socket on and off as part of the polarity test as well, as well as recording our highest reading as our continuity of CPC in our box heading R1 plus R2. I'd love to do the test on this rig, however the cables are so short in length we're hardly going to get any resistance reading. So I'm going to go upstairs into uh, one of our testing bays where we have three sockets as an A3 radial and we're going to test it there just because the circuit conductor length is longer we'll get a more realistic reading and they'll show you how to carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity of our A3 radial circuit. We could carry out a visual polarity on every socket outlet. Very difficult if you're having to take off every single front to look inside it for the connections. And often, because we see in this case, in this part of the radial circuit, there's two browns, two blues, and two CPCs. So we've got two lines, two neutrals, and two CPCs that we believe straight away that the polarity is correct. You have to physically look for the letter L for line. N for neutral, the earth symbol is present in these two positions to visually prove polarity. Often when we do a visual polarity, we're just happy with the two blues and two browns being together and not necessarily confirm their position within the back of the socket outlet. So I prefer the polarity test to be done from the front as well as therefore proving the polarity of the actual socket switch. So it actually will turn it on and off. So let's see how we're gonna carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity test on a rig upstairs. So we're going to test the A3 radial here on this test rig. Exactly the same fundamental principles as testing the very small one we've done for our assessment piece. We've got a single socket and two twin sockets wired as an A3 radial. They're fused at 20 amps and wired in 2.5 millimeter squared twin and CPC cable. I've already isolated the supply and secured isolation, which I've shown in a previous video. I've also disconnected the line conductor, but this time for the first part of the test, I actually linked it to the neutral bar. So where the neutral is connected. So first of all, we're gonna do part polarity test. So we're gonna start by trying to prove the two pin positions in each socket outlet are line and neutral. However, they could be the wrong way round. So we're gonna go on in the second part of the test to link line and CPC, which we're very comfortable with doing after 12 weeks with me, in order to achieve our R1 plus R2 reading for continuity of CPC and prove polarity. So in other words, we will have proved, first of all, the line and, line and neutral pins, ran the right way, and then we'll prove the line and earth pin where the CPC is connected in the second part. If we prove all three pin positions are correct, we do that by doing the two tests. So if we test that one and then that one, by testing two of the three, we must prove that all three pin positions are in the right place. So let's see the first stage of the test where we can test between line and neutral, which is part polarity and then we'll go on and do line and CPC to complete the continuity of CPC and polarity tests. Let's see how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna set our mega MFT tester up to do a continuity test. So as always, we need to move it round into the ohm scale, which is identified with an orange indicator on it. This time we're gonna use our plug-in test lead, which has been floating about in our box and we haven't used it for the first 12 weeks. Our first test requires us to do the part polarity test between the line and neutral, so we're gonna be using the red and the blue leads first of all. However, they still need to be connected into the red and green sections that we've used exclusively throughout the 12 weeks that we've been here so far. So I'm gonna put the red one in the red hole and the blue one into the green hole. Okay, so we're in that position there. We've ignored the blue one altogether. We're gonna to need to remove the resistance of our, our lead and we're gonna to need to short out, in this case, the line and neutral pin. And we can do that by positioning a knife blade across it or something that conducts such as a coin. So we can go across like so. Okay, so if I use my knife, hold it into position. Let's see what reading we get, nice and firm. Got a reading of 0.16, press the test button once and I've now got zero. So I've removed the resistance between line and neutral. We're not going to record this reading. This is part polarity test. We're gonna go on and then do between 
line and CPC to achieve our R1 plus R2 reading in the second part of the test for our radial socket circuit. So my Mega MFT is set up now, testing between the line and neutral connection. This is part polarity test, so we're gonna try and prove the position of the line and neutral at each of the socket outlets. They could be reversed in one or more of the outlets, so we won't have proved polarity at this stage. Only by completing the second stage, which tests between the line and where the CPC is connected in the earth pin, will we prove polarity. By proving two of the positions, you'll prove the three positions are correct. So we all end up proving that one is line, neutral, and the earth where the CPC is connected is there. We'll also operate the switch at the same time. The first stage doesn't require us to keep the reading in mind, so it's a test between line and neutral. It's only part polarity test. However, we expect to see the reading get higher if the further we are away from the consumer's unit, the more cable in circuit that we get. So let's go for that test then. So we plug into the first socket outlet, turn it on. Reading of 0.49 goes off. On to the second side, fractionally higher. That's fine, and then off. Moving down, maybe we're now a little further away from the consumer's unit, so maybe the reading will be slightly higher. It is, and the switch operates correctly. And down we go, and then maybe this will be the highest one that we get. However, we're not recording any of these readings. We're just working our way down through the radial circuit. Okay, so we've done a reading between line and neutral as part polarity. We can now swap our test leads over between line and CPC in order to achieve our R1 plus R2 reading. It will also allow us to tick the polarity box as well when we've completed the next stage of the test. Let's set our test instrument up and let's move our link in our consumer's unit now to test between the line and the CPC. So let's set our test instrument up to complete the polarity test and then get our continuity of CPC reading of which we'll record the highest one. So we're gonna reset it back to ohms. This time we're gonna be measuring between the line and CPC. So we're gonna use the red one and the green one this time and they are in the red and green holes in the top of the MFT. Okay, so we're ready. And we have to remove the resistance of the lead once again. We're gonna use our knife. Remembering that the fuse is located this side on the plug top, so that makes this one the line and this one the earth pin. So if I short those two together, we get a reading of, move that out of the way, it's flashing zero, so it's gone below zero. Test button once, test button once again, we're now to zero. So we should find that we can use that now to complete our polarity test and record the highest reading as our continuity of CPC. So we've changed our test leads over, so we've got the red and green one in. We're testing between line and CPC. We're going to do each socket in turn on the A3 radial circuit, and we're going to record the highest reading wherever we achieve it. We now should complete the polarity test by proving the line and CPC are in the correct position. By doing two of the three possible options, we actually prove that all three pin positions are correct. We'll operate the switch in each case again. And remember, we need to remember the highest reading now to record as R1 plus R2 on our test paperwork. So let's go to the first one. Slightly higher reading than before because the CPC is a smaller cross-sectional area than that of the neutral. So we're testing between the 2.5 line and the 1.5 CPC. So 0.66, turn it back off and turn it back on. We're gonna need to leave the switch on for insulation resistance, which we're gonna carry out next. So at this stage, Every time we test a socket outlet, we're gonna leave the switch back into the on position. Okay, 0.67, slightly higher now. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on, 0.7. Point seven one, maybe we'll get the highest one here. We have 0.76, let's do the switch. And then we've got to leave it on. So 0.7, wait for it, 0.79, it's always gonna change when I say it. 0.79 ohms for us is the highest reading achieved. That's recorded as R1 plus R2. We've completed 
two of the three pin positions, so we've actually proved all three. We've operated the switch, so we've sufficed the polarity check, so we can now tick the polarity box. We've left the switch fronts in the on position, and we can carry out the insulation resistance test as we've done before in previous presentations. So we're set up ready for our insulation resistance test. We've made sure that no loads are connected. So in other words, everything is unplugged from the socket outlet circuit. And we've left the switches in the on position in each case. So the insulation resistance test gets to the very front of the plate of the outlet. So now we're ready to carry out the insulation resistance test exactly as we normally do with us being 12 weeks into the course. We're gonna test between line and neutral, neutral and earth, where the CPC is connected and CPC and line. Doesn't matter which order we do it in, we're gonna set our test instrument up as we always have done at 500 volts, and we're gonna pass our insulation resistance test through those three conductors. So let's see how we're gonna do that then. So clipping onto the neutral bar and onto the top where the line is connected, press and hold my instrument. I've got a reading greater than the machine can read, so I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. If I test them between neutral and the earth bar where the CPC is connected. Once again, greater than the machine can read greater than 999 mega ohms. And then finally move it across. So we're testing between the CPC and line. And we've got greater than 999 mega ohms. My test paperwork in my workshop allows us to record all three readings. We've only been with us for 12 weeks and I'm happy that we do the three sets. I've also done a video presentation where we do a combined reading for students at level three. Hope this has been some help testing our A3 radial circuit. We've done the continuity of CPC and polarity. For the first time since you've been with me, we've actually tested between neutral and line first as part polarity, and then between line and CPC to get our R1 plus R2 reading and complete the polarity test. We've left the socket outlets in the on position and carried out the insulation resistance as we've stated before in previous lighting circuits. We're now onto an A3 socket circuit.